Wind is really freaking cold. It started at 3.34. Just a couple of avalanches behind us. I think I'm gonna shut up now because this sounds awful. <laughs> Why is it that we do this? Why do we force ourselves through terrible conditions from places that are unrated and have no beta? Where chances are, you'll most likely have to come back again, armed with your own first-hand knowledge to be able to hit the objective. This is a question I end up asking myself a lot during the middle of these trips. But time and time again, I find myself on Google Earth, looking at some obscure peak or some random objective with almost no images or trail reports. But for me, doing the research and planning required to get to some of these remote places, even if they don't turn out to be five-star rated, that's where I find true adventure. Brought to you by askanarchitect.org, the DIYers Project Help Hotline. After a long drive, my climbing partner and I were really excited to get off the road and hit the dirt. I'd been eyeing this area for a really long time. There was a multitude of trailheads in extremely remote locations that all required off-road access. And I was excited to see how far the truck could actually make it. As we got closer to the base of the mountains, the road narrowed and became way rougher. The sun had sank behind the mountains and it was getting dark and cold fast. We began keeping our eyes open for any sort of campsite. All in all, the truck actually handled the trail really well and it made me excited for future expeditions to the area. In the end, it was actually a snowbank that stopped us. But luckily a campsite is right next to us. We set up camp, pulled our stuff together for the next day, made a fire, watched the sunset on the other side of the valley, and enjoyed the complete solitude of the area.
We took our time getting ready that morning and hit the trail much later than normal. We could practically see where we were trying to get to for our second night's camp, and it seemed like an easy objective. Unfortunately, leaving as late as we did, it left us with zero contingency in case we came across any navigation issues or any other issues on the trail. And in the beginning, it seemed fine. It seemed that the trail was straightforward, we were making great time, we were well on our way to get to camp early. Further down the trail, we were supposed to be looking out for a turn. As the location came and went, and we continued along, we grudgingly had to accept that we needed to turn around and look for it again. Unfortunately, even after we turned around, we still couldn't find it. And it left us no choice but to face my least favorite hiking obstruction. A ravine full of willows, made even worse by soft snow, and skis trapped to our backpacks that caught on almost every single branch as we fought our way through. So a little bit later in the day than we were hoping we started way down there, ran around this side, went around, excuse me. Then we could not find the trail. You could see it from here, but we could not see it down there. And we went through these willows, fought our way through them, and we finally, finally get to start skinning up. It's a lot later than we wanted, but at least it's finally gonna happen. <laughs> Go on. departure finally caught up with us. As the sun sank behind the mountain, the snow began to ice up, and the skins on our split boards would no longer grab. Exhausted and frustrated, we were forced to put down our packs at a far lower elevation than we had planned. It's kind of a shitty day. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, that's for sure. I'm just gonna put on my my boots, my harness, my crampons, my bag's already packed, my board's actually even already on my mm -hmm. my thing. Um, and so it's really just like a wake up and grab your stuff and go. Mm -hmm. After a little bit of debate, we figured out when we were gonna wake up and a rough timeline for the next okay. day as well. We can get into town by three an hour to brewery, it's four, six hours home, that's 10 o'clock, you know? So I think that 9.30 turnaround time is a good. Mm -hmm. Plus the snow's not warming up and, yeah.
After getting the usual fitful rest on the night before a summit attempt, we woke up at 3.30 a.m. We grabbed our stuff and headed out into the very cold, early morning moonlight. Hiking up almost all morning, started about 4 a.m. I uh, finally reached the base of the couloir. Snow's pretty icy, perfect for climbing. Uh, punching through a little bit further down, that was frustrating, but now it's good climbing. Uh, it actually looks like we're gonna make it. So, I'm stoked. What do you think of that avalanche right in the center? I think it happened a while ago, so I think we're good. <laughs> Great assessment. Yes. Yeah. As we climbed higher, however, we began to see the true extent of all the wet avalanches around us. Even though they had been occurring on much steeper slopes, with the sun rising and being on an east face, we decided to err on the side of caution and head down early. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, come on down. Even though we were bummed we had to turn around early, we had still made the majority of our objective and had an awesome line behind us.
If you're ever curious about how good you are at turning, try snowboarding with a 50 pound backpack. As we got to lower and lower elevations, falls like that became a little more serious. With even heavier bags after we packed up camp and shrinking snow coverage as we went down to the cars, we slowly made our way back. And we were in no mood to break out the cameras. Done. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the adventure. These films take an incredible amount of effort and energy to make, so I ask that you please support my channel and subscribe. It's free for you, and lets you know when I upload new videos so you can come along on all my adventures.